Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this Spring uh, with Java based configuration uh, video tutorial. Uh, this is a project which I had created long time back when I had uploaded uploaded a Spring uh, code Spring videos and this is the very first video which I had uploaded. So if you have you would have watched my previous video tutorial in a Spring then you must be familiar with this program so still i'm going to explain you uh, this project right so basically this project uh, basically i have used configuration file to configure java class as a, a spring bean so let me explain explain this project so we have a message class which contains two uh, fields two private fields message id and message and corresponding public set targeter method and uh, in this configuration file what basically i have done uh, i have registered this uh, java class as a spring bean with this message uh, this id this this is the bean id and i have i have initialized this two properties its property using setter based dependency injection and i have configured alias of this bean uh, two alias first is the my message one and second is the my message two so this bin right whose id is message can be accessed by this two name as well right this is all about this project and in client program what basically i have done i have used xml bin factory and uh, first of all i have created class path resource and there i am passing beans.xml this is configuration file which is present in the src folder and we got the reference of uh, resource a resource i am passing to the constructor of xml bin factory and i am getting the bean factory object i just i'm calling this get bean method by passing the bean id right so this is the bean id and i'm asking to the container give me the instance of uh, this bean whose id is message so this returns the generic object and just i'm type casting this object into message and just i'm trying to print this state right and again i have used get bean method that is second overloaded method in the bean factory which takes first as the bean id and second is the class so here you don't need to type class uh, in message like this what we have did, did we, what we have we have done here so, and just we are printing the state of message right and here just i am trying to retrieve the alias of this bean so there are two aliases we have configured over here so these two aliases will be printed just i am printing using for each loop right and uh, there is one more there are a lot of overloaded get bin methods so one method is text class name itself so i'm just i have shown how to make use of this overloaded method so this is also printing the state of the bean and uh, again I just i am i'm trying to type what is the type of this bean so this will print the simply the class name qualified class name of this bean id right so qualified uh, class name is nothing but this this is the qualified class name right and uh, finally just i'm checking whether this bin is singleton or not so by default uh, any bin which you configure in the xml file you do not specify any scope explicitly uh, then by default is singleton scope so this is gonna return you true so if i run this program then i get the output like this right but uh, what what is my planning my planning is to remove this xml file completely so i want to wipe out this xml file so how to do that so basically we have to write a configuration file java class which is equivalent to this configuration file right so let's create a class and i would give the package name com.infotech.config and i would say here let's say message config and this class i'm going to annotate as at the rate configuration configuration so this represents the uh, this xml file I inside this class i'm going to create a method whose return type is message itself and i would say message or you can say get message and this is going to return an instance of message 
new message. Let's import it and this method I'm gonna annotate at, at the rate p. So basically uh, this instance will be registered as a spring bin in the spring container. So that's what we have annotated this method as the rate bin. And what, what would be the bin name? So by default as we discussed earlier bin name would be get message whatever is the method name. But if you want to override this name with the name that you want so you can specify here so here i want bin name would be message right because in client program i am retrieving this bin by this id right this id so here i have given the message and apart from that you can specify a lot of alias name so in a configuration file we have given some alias name like this so this alias name I am going to specify by specifying just separate each name with the semicolon it's not semicolon with the comma sorry so these are the alias name I have specified here right so uh, now instantiation just we are doing over here we are, we are doing over here and this will register into the spring container now initialization part we have to do in the here itself so we have a at the rate value tag so using at the rate value tag sorry v should be capital we can initialize this property these two property we can initialize so here i would say 1001 and here you can specify any message like hello hello world right so these two methods these two property we have in slides like this just we have hard coded this value you may read from the property file as well but here just i have a hard coded right so these things we have done right these things also we have done so what i will do now client program we will have to do some modification so here what i will do we don't want any more this uh, XML file right so here you will have to use a class is called annotation sorry annotation config application context this class I am gonna use and context equal to new annotation config application context and here you need to specify the class name configuration class name that is message config dot class right and here instead of bean factory we will have to write this context and here everywhere just replace with context replace with context okay and that's it almost we have done so what i will do i will wrap this code inside the try catch so go to the surrounds with surround with try catch so we can write try catch like this and we have a finally block we can write a finally block and here i will what i am going to do these things I can initialize within the try catch and here what we will do let's initialize this by null so that this will be reachable in the finally block and here I'm going to check if this no context not equal to null then close it in the finally block why in finally block because uh, if some exception arises in the try block then still this code is going to execute so in so if try is going to execute successfully or without or with some exception the still finally is going to execute so this is the good place to close any resources right so now we are good to go 
now this XML is not uh, any more needed because this XML is not we are not going to refer anywhere in the code so safely I have removed now let's run this code and this should work properly and you can see what output previously we are getting right same output we got over here right so if you see here then I can compare that so here basically just I am trying to retrieve the beam by this message ID and type cast into the message and just I have printed so that's what we are getting the output now I have called second overloaded method first I have passed ID and second is the class and just try to print the message state so that's we are, that's what we are getting now aliases just I wanted to print so these are the two aliases so we are getting over here again third overloaded method I have called and try to print the state of object so that's what we are getting now what is the type of this bean so that is nothing but the qualified name of a class that's what we are getting over here right and this is singleton or not saying that true right so that's all I have in this video tutorial I hope you enjoyed learning this this code I am going to upload on the github and github location I will specify in the video description itself so if you have any query or question then please do post below to the video I will try to answer those queries so thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial